past the expiration date and useless. Looks like a life of poverty for the eternal handyman. Being ragged suits you. She threw a glass of red wine in my face. I realized I had been used by her. Once I lost my value, this is how she treated me. I just wanted her to see the real me, but it was all in vain. My name is Kevin. I'm an only child. My father runs a trading company, and it was fairly large and doing well. In general, people saw me as a spoiled rich kid. When I was in elementary school, I always bragged about everything. I would tell everyone about the latest computer or games I got, or all the albums of my favorite musicians, or every volume of my favorite comics. Kevin, you're always getting stuff bought for you. Lucky you, they would say, looking at me with envy. And more than anything, I boasted about my father, John. My dad is amazing. He runs a trading company. The number of employees is growing every year, and he said he wants to expand even more. Isn't that awesome? Most people praised my bragging, and as a little kid, I was on cloud nine. In fifth grade, as I was bragging as usual, one girl said to me, Kevin, do you enjoy bragging every day? What's wrong with it? Some kids might say awesome, but do you realize others are getting tired of it? Sophie, are you jealous? The girl who confronted me. Her name was Sophie Taylor. She was always a top student and the class president. Honestly, I didn't like her type. Jealous? Let me tell you something. It's your father who's amazing, not you. What? If you keep boasting like that, people will start to leave you. People will leave me. Try being more humble when you interact with others. I couldn't respond to her mature words. I went home and kept writing her words in my notebook, over and over. Looking back, I hardly had anyone I could call a friend back then. I was only able to brag because of my father's success. Naturally, people got tired of hearing unwanted bragging and saw me as an obnoxious person, so they drifted away from me. I had no humility and didn't consider others' feelings. After that, I started to dislike myself and spent my last two years of elementary school quietly. I began to really want true friends. But rebuilding relationships with classmates who saw me as a jerk was tough. I had to reap what I had sown. Dad, Mom, I want friends, I confessed to my parents. I asked to be in a different environment for middle school, away from my current classmates. They agreed, and I spent six years in a boarding school in the next state. During those six years, I kept my father's work a secret and tried to show people the real me. I never bragged and always stayed humble. Gradually, I made friends, and eventually, close friends. My six years at boarding school were filled with friendship and encouragement, and they were truly fulfilling. I graduated and got into a prestigious university's business school, aiming to be like my father. My parents were overjoyed and proud. After six years in a boarding school, I commuted from home for university. I made more friends who understood me. And in the business school, I was always at the top of my class. My friends gave me the nickname Kev, and I didn't mind it at all. Kevin, can you help me with this? asked a beautiful woman who approached me. Her name was Emma. She had taken a year off before joining the same university, so we were in the same year, but she was a year older. Whenever she didn't understand something, she would come to me repeatedly. Seeing the beautiful Emma happily talking with me made my friends look at me with envy. Kevin, you're amazing. You can do anything. Thanks. I love studying business. Before tests, I would give Emma special one-on-one -on -one tutoring, aiming for near-perfect scores. Kevin, will you go out with me? Emma said. Our study sessions eventually led to a romantic relationship. I had a smooth university life thanks to my professors, friends, and Emma. It was significant to interact with the people I wanted to. When everyone was busy with job hunting, I didn't participate. I had already decided to work for my parents. One day during university, when I was still hiding the fact that I would work for my parents, Emma asked me about it. What about job hunting? I'm skipping it. Are you planning to study abroad or go to grad school? No, I'm not considering that at all. Facing a barrage of future-related questions, I decided to share a secret with Emma. Actually, my dad runs a trading company, and I'm planning to work there. Wow, that's amazing. I'm jealous. It's my parents who are amazing, not me. 
I didn't know about your parents. I had no idea you were from a wealthy family. Please keep this a secret. I don't want anyone to know. Got it, I'll keep it a secret. While everyone struggled with job hunting, I spent time in the university library reading various management books. Emma, with her stunning looks, landed a job at a cosmetics company. I joined my father's trading company. Even after graduation and starting our careers, Emma and I continued our relationship. I wanted both my work and personal life to go well. I wanted to marry Emma someday. That's what I was thinking. I had a chance to talk with my dad alone at home. Dad, I need you to do me a favor. I said to my father. I want us to keep our father-son relationship a secret at work. Since late elementary school, I've avoided telling people about your business. Trying to show my true self. I don't want people to look at me with preconceived notions. Is that so? I don't mind, but... I want to start from scratch and be judged fairly. I'll do any job. I want people to see and evaluate me for who I am. My father agreed. Society is harsh, Kevin. Try to have various mentors, he advised. With this understanding, I was placed in various departments in the company. My early career was a whirlwind, switching departments every year, learning from different mentors and absorbing knowledge. In short, I was like a handyman, but it was rewarding and fun to be evaluated on my own merits. Occasionally, I would meet Emma privately. I become the chief of PR at the cosmetics company, Emma said. That's amazing, Emma. How about you, Kevin? I'm a handyman, learning a lot from different people. Handyman? What about a title or position? I don't need those right now. But I'm enjoying it. Are you not going to take over for your dad? I can't think about that yet. I'm too busy learning. I see, oh, by the way, my company does business with your dad's trading company. It would be great if we could collaborate someday. That's great to hear. Let's make it happen. Emma was steadily climbing the ladder. I was moving through various departments, gaining experience at my father's trading company. Though I said I was a handyman, I took pride in the meaningful work I was doing. Eight years passed since I joined my father's company, and I had worked in ten different departments. I hadn't achieved anything spectacular, but my work was being recognized, and my father heard about my good performance. No one knew about our father-son relationship, so I received fair evaluations. Following my father's advice, I had many mentors inside and outside the company who taught me a lot. Although I felt I hadn't achieved much, others thought I had accomplished plenty. My father was satisfied with the fair evaluations I received within the company. Realizing my personal growth, I found myself at 30. Emma, being a year older, had turned 31. We both started to think about marriage. One day, while spending a relaxed evening at home with my parents, my father spoke to me. Kevin, I'm thinking of starting a new company. That's great news. I want you to work there. I was taken aback by my father's sudden words. But there are many capable people in the company. I've been hearing great things about you from every department. Now is the right time. It's for your future. I see, so we're starting from scratch again. I began to feel excited about my father's proposal. Having seen various departments, it was time for a new venture. My heart was racing. In the current sales department, there's a woman named Sophie Brown. Sophie is very capable. She's an important mentor to me. She taught me a lot. I plan to make her your subordinate. A subordinate? She's my boss, but that sounds reassuring. Do you think I can do it? You can. Go for it. With my father's approval, I started fresh with a new business within the trading company. It was a trading company specializing in the next generation IT, small in size but elite in style. Kevin, I'm excited to be working with you again. Sophie, I look forward to working with you too. Sophie had taught me the intricacies of building client relationships in the sales department. She was petite with a very short haircut. She wore sharp black-rimmed glasses that exuded a capable aura. Beyond her appearance, she was highly competent and a valuable mentor. Even during busy times, she supported me thoroughly. 
because I was so focused on the new venture, I grew distant from Emma. She frequently emailed, when can we meet, but I couldn't give a good response. When things finally settled down, I invited Emma to dinner as an apology. There was a big meeting at the company that day, so I couldn't leave. I made a reservation at an Italian restaurant for the evening. I was sure she would be delighted. None of that mattered, the meeting was packed with important discussions for the future. I started to sweat, realizing I might be late. Sophie noticed my distress. Kevin, is everything all right? Well, I have an appointment after this. Don't worry. The meeting is almost over, even though it's running a bit late. If you'd like, I can drive you. That would be great. Thank you, Sophie. Finally, the workday ended. We got into the company car and headed to the Italian restaurant I had reserved. Thank you for your hard work today. Thanks, Sophie. I appreciate you driving me. It's my pleasure, Kevin. You're always so humble, I enjoy working with you. I'm glad to hear that. You're my mentor, after all. I rely on you a lot. Oh, I should send a message, I might be a bit late. I pulled out my tablet and informed Emma that I would be late. We'll reach the restaurant in South Manhattan around 6.15 p.m. 15 minutes late. But I have good news to share with her today. Yes, I'm sure she'll be pleased. We arrived at the Italian restaurant. I thanked Sophie and quickly got out of the car and ran inside. Long time no see. It had been three months since I last saw Emma. She looked a bit annoyed, having waited for over 15 minutes. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I sat down across from Emma, who was already seated. You've been busy lately. Yeah, there's been a lot going on. I had a big meeting today. I planned to tell Emma about my current work after we toasted. She would surely be happy. How's your dad's trading company doing? I think it's doing well. I haven't been there much lately. You haven't? I'm working at a different company now. Ha, huh, I'm still a handyman. A handyman. Emma's expression grew more displeased. Aren't you planning to take over for your dad? I don't have the confidence for that yet. So, no, not right now. Not planning to take over, are you on assignment somewhere else? What's the big deal? I'm enjoying it. At my cosmetics company, I'm in the middle of presenting a major business partnership with your dad's trading company. Wow, that's impressive. I need your help. I'm not sure how I can help. I was focused on my work at a new IT specialized trading company, and I thought that was a separate matter. I'm the head of PR now. I have a major project. And at this crucial time, you're off on an assignment, doing miscellaneous tasks. You're really an eternal handyman. An eternal handyman? That's fine by me. I'm okay with it right now. I was thinking about marrying you, but I can't. Back in university, your excellent grades were perfect for helping me with my coursework. In other words, you were my study buddy. I used you for that. Used me? What are you talking about? And because you said you were the heir to a trading company, I stayed with you. I'm turning 33 soon. Everyone around me is getting married and having kids. How long do you expect me to wait? You won't take over for your parents and you're just a handyman on assignment, it's too much. Do you think you can have a good life like this? Your usefulness has an expiration date. Emma, please calm down. At that moment, a male sommelier approached to pour red wine into our glasses. Let's calm down. It's been a while since we met. Let's have a toast with this red wine. I have something to tell you. There's nothing left to talk about. Whoa! Emma threw the glass of red wine in my face. You're past your expiration date and useless. An eternal handyman is destined for a life of poverty. Being in rags suits you. I'm leaving. Emma stood up. Why would you do that? Trying to control my anger, I took a handkerchief from my bag and started wiping my face in suit, but the red wine stains were not easy to remove. As Emma turned towards the entrance, I saw a black car pull up. A woman got out and hurried into the restaurant towards me. Mr. Anderson, are you all right? 
Excuse me, can we get some napkins, please? It was Sophie. She asked the staff for napkins and handed them to me. Mr. Anderson? Emma said, surprised. I don't know what happened here, but wine is meant to be enjoyed, not thrown on. Apologize to our CEO. Sophie sternly addressed Emma. CEO? What do you mean? I was going to tell you tonight, but I guess it's ruined now. Did you become the CEO of the assignee company? You keep mentioning an assignment, but actually, I was appointed as the new CEO of my father's new venture during today's meeting. Emma's attitude changed instantly upon hearing this. CEO? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I was planning to discuss it over dinner. By the way, Sophie, why are you here? You left your important tablet in the car, so I came back to deliver it. Thank you, Sophie. You've been a great help. I'll have to cancel dinner and head home now. If you'd like, I can drive you home. Thank you for everything. Emma, thanks for everything. This useless eternal handyman will take his leave. We won't be meeting again. So don't worry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way, please reconsider. I'm glad I saw your true colors. Even I couldn't ignore what you said just now. We can't cause any more trouble here. Sophie, let's go home. I paid for the wine and the cancelled meal, then got into the company car. Emma was left crying alone. In the car, Sophie spoke to me. I'm sorry for the sudden interruption. I didn't mean to intrude on your personal matters. What are you talking about, Sophie? We just weren't compatible. I have no regrets. Right now, work is my priority. There was an awkward silence for a while. With a sigh, I looked out the window, and Sophie continued. Mr. Anderson, you've really changed, in a good way. You're very humble and kind to others. Is that so? You mentioned that before we went to the restaurant. Have I changed that much since our sales department days? More than just the sales department days. More than just that? Do you remember when I said, try being more humble when you interact with others? What? Wait a minute. Are you Sophie Taylor, the class president from elementary school? She nodded. Sophie, my classmate from elementary school, had changed her name to Sophie Brown after her father passed away during high school and she reverted to her mother's maiden name. I couldn't hide my surprise at how different and mature she looked compared to her younger self. When you told me that, I wrote it in my notebook over and over. I was so frustrated back then, determined to prove you wrong someday. You had such a shocked look on your face back then. Your eyes were wide open, and you were frozen. That was 20 years ago. Feeling a sense of nostalgia, we naturally started talking like old classmates rather than in a formal business manner. It felt like a mini reunion inside the car. I shared with her how I had changed my mindset and attended a boarding school in the neighboring state. Looks like my lightning bolt worked back then, Sophie said with a laugh. It sure did, almost too well. It nearly knocked me out, I replied. But I've watched you grow every day, and now you've become the CEO everyone recognizes. When I was asked to be your subordinate, I was thrilled. You're still the best mentor, Sophie. Or rather, I should say in a professional way, Ms. Brown, you're the best mentor. Thank you, I will continue to do my best. We're almost at your home, Mr. Anderson. Our mini reunion in the car was filled with laughter and tears, ending on a happy note. After parting ways with Emma, I was able to focus solely on work without distractions. Even with the title of CEO, I still had to handle various tasks and ensure I treated each employee with respect and care. I approached everyone with utmost humility. This was true throughout boarding school and university. When you treat people with humility, they naturally gather around you. In elementary school, my bragging drove people away, but having a mentor like Sophie taught me the importance of humility. Maybe I am a fortunate person. My mentor from elementary school was now my secretary and a significant part of my life. I found myself increasingly drawn to her as a person. Life is unpredictable. It's the unpredictability that makes it interesting. With a positive outlook, you can overcome difficulties and turn them into opportunities. With the help of many people, my company grew rapidly, even expanding internationally. 
My father's foresight was impressive. I still can't surpass him, and I hoped he would always be that insurmountable challenge. Unfortunately, Emma's cosmetics company, which relied on my father's trading company, couldn't secure a partnership and had to downsize. They seemed to be struggling financially. Emma likely had some realizations through this experience, and I hoped she would use it to grow stronger. As for my personal life, I proposed to a woman. She had been a bit daunting in elementary school, but now she was the person I loved most in the world. Sophie, congratulations. You did amazing. Thank you, Kevin. We're a family of four now. Today was the due date. I managed to be there just in time. Sophie and I welcomed healthy twin boys. Sophie had become my best partner in both personal and professional life. I couldn't be more excited about the future.